in such a way that we give them SF, knowing that we've but got something But at the same it. time, you have to realize that OG probably have adapted to like, oh, we could have done things differently sure. that game, even with that particular draft. So it's a risky one. Yeah. Still, they give away the tusk, too, which is... Which we thought was a, a very big problem. In there are so many series. levels of thinking right now. Mm -hmm. Five seconds remaining. Brinkmanship will continue. So what other heroes are there? Bane is overlapped by Dazzle, so I don't think they'll go with that. Um, and they're not going to go with the Slaughter again. Yeah, maybe Undying for Pi? I was thinking Undying. It's a hero that, you know, wants to fight early on. One of the best ones at fighting early on. They could go Ember actually for MD. That, might... could... that has been the strongest card of their arsenal so far. Alternatively, possibly later on in the draft, definitely not right now, but a Bounty Hunter. Mm -hmm. I think Ember Spirit is probably the, okay. the so they best score pick up. They, they could go for it. Right. Slaughter again. Slaughter was very useful in like, the latter half of the game, I would say. like For the continual chase, the stun is on such a low cooldown. I definitely saw it's, it's used for Secret. In, in game number two. But Slaughter. I like how they didn't pick it up first. Like, this this is the big difference between game one, two, and three, is Slaughter was the very first overall pick for Secret. Yeah, getting the Dazzle, or removing the Dazzle from, from OG, and, and at the same time getting the support hero you've been the most successful with throughout the tournament, seems like a great opener. If they're going to ban away the Phantom Lancer and perhaps Undying, that will leave Gyrocopter out in the pool unless OG ban it. And they could have a Gyro against the Slardar, which is quite favorable because Slardar can't really challenge uh, Gyrocopter sometimes just in lane. And you would have this very early momentum-based lineup with the Tusk and Gyro establishing quick control and then the SF creating space for him on the Radiant side to build up to that core position. It is very likely they'll bend out the Gyro. Three wins on no-tail today on the Gyro Cup, but they bend out the Phantom Lands already. They're taking away all the carries that he's been playing throughout the day. You're okay with them leaving out and dying though, when you already have Tusk on OG? Yeah, sort of thing. I think they have to. I think it'd be a tactical mistake to just leave the, the, the Gyro Cup in there. So there's still AA left as a support too, in case either team wants to go for the Huskar. Okay. Oh no, man. It's not. Uh, what other tricks do we have? So you mentioned the gyro ban. I'm not actually sure if they're going to ban the gyro copter though. You think maybe they ban the ember again? The ember seems. It seems like it seems more likely that Secret will pick it up though, rather than OG Bandit. They made the first phase, first game, second phase, the second game. But would you have banned out the PL if you were going to go for an Ember Spirit? Unlikely, unless you expected the Ember to be banned. Yeah, would you have banned the PL if you weren't planning on banning the Gyro either? They could go for Juggernaut. I think Juggernaut's proven to be a very effective hero versus the Gyrocopter. And it's also more early game than the Slark and the uh, anti-mage that we saw from Envy. And it, this time it hasn't yet been banned out by OG. It's true. Did they ban it out last game? No. Okay. Okay, so there's still quite a lot of the cheese left this mm -hmm. time around. A lot of it. I don't really think Team Secret fears the Brood that much. Huskar's already banned out, so it's pretty much just left the Meepo. Yeah. The Team Secret, I've watched them play against the Brood multiple times, and they like to just have two aggressive supports just completely zone out the Brood until like six, seven, eight minutes. And after that, they have like the Slara with Amp to deal with them. So that's not high on my list of picks for OG. I think they can just play standard. They've proven in game number one and game number two. They don't, they don't need something strange like that. Mm. We've actually stayed away from pretty much all of the strains today mm -hmm. uh, through five games. A lot of their other strains are limited by the fact that Miracle's Hero has already been determined with the okay. SF. So they ban out the Ember, which makes more sense. Immediately go with a Bane follow up. So this draft, back to following the meta almost in its entirety. Five of the most popular heroes. Hmm. So there's still the option of the 
how do they want to deal with the Shadow Fiend? Shadow Fiend's not a hero we saw so much. It, it was seen in the last series. It was handled very easily by a TA plus Lich. We have seen, like, Lena plus Quap with a Spirit Breaker. We've seen Bounty Hunters uh, able to deal with them. But this is a Radiant Shadow Fiend, mind you. They, they have to have a hero that can aggressively ward their jungle, take their stacks, kill the Shadow Fiend, limit his soul count. I like um, going back to Jacob's idea, I think it was in game one, going for perhaps the safe lane Queen of Pain, and then they can pick up the, like, carry TA for mid. Dire side, you have Ancients. You still have um, an early tempo controller in the Queen of Pain to start aggressively moving in and shutting down the SF's jungle. Yeah, it wasn't coincidence that ET completely demolished them in their game one. I think TA is a... Is a great way of dealing with, with OG and the Queen of Pain, obviously. If you need to pick a carry, pick a carry that can fight early on. Same way we saw some mail on the Doombringer really play a, a big role in their win as well. And then, again, the Bounty Hunter, I really think it's key. Look at the AA now. Uh, Dark Seer still in there. And Dying still in there. Doesn't a Queen of Pain pick and fight a Meepo from OG? Sure, you'd have to fourth pick it and ban it out. Five. But that's unfortunately not the scenario that OG can go for here. So we're unsure as to whether the Tusk is played by Crit or by Moon. Still very open-ended on those. Do they want to pick up No Tail or another core? Sven's been a pretty popular response to the Slardar. It's had mixed not, results though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm it not has. completely convinced by it. Sometimes it looks like the perfect counter and others. It just, it just lacks the mobility. They they kite, often just get kited until War Cry's over, or just, you know, drop a crush on him, watch him run around. Is it because they expected a meeple pick from Secret? Ten seconds remaining. I mean, it's possible, but I think it's much more likely that it's just in response to the slaughter. They do have, like, Ben was talking about some of the downsides. Okay. Heroes like Tusk and Bane are strong supports to be able to have around a Sven because it helps out with his mobility and locks down the enemy a bit more. I need a third race king we've seen at Frankfurt. A 98 draft. So now team, team OG can't actually respond with an anti-mage pick because that's the same as their Shadow Fiend player. I guess Noto can probably play anti-mage. I, th I think almost any carry player can play anti-mage. You don't think he's going to play the spin? He, I mean, he could, but I'm saying you have to have a response for the Raid King. They, they don't have any Necrobook carriers. I mean, kill his team. Kill his team. Then deal with him, enfeeble him while you do so. That's it, a response. Go for is. Clockwork and just try and kite around the Raid King as best as possible. I That's think Clockwork offers too. more initiation, more catch to be able mm -hmm. to force the fight around a Sven. I'm just not sure if they want like a direct hard counter to him or just kite him around as is the general game plan versus these melee carries. <laughs> Invoker banned out. It's actually pretty good versus. Wraith King as well, although OG will take it out of the equation. They don't seem to be concerned with the Queen of Pain whatsoever. They do have the Pain Elemental this time around. Tusk as well, pretty good at dealing with it. She's not particularly strong up against Sven. They don't have the early roam though to deal with the shit. They ban out the clock. They at the same read as Cap. Do you not think this is an undying? If you just... It, it could very well be an undying. I feel like they have a sufficient late game and they can deal with the Wraith King. They can put on your game aggression regardless of what Team Secret picks last. If OG wants to go in, in style with what they've done so far, Undying is a great pick. I actually like Beastmaster a little bit more, personally. But it's not a bad idea. Kill Beast on the Wraith King, that's one yeah. way of hiding as well. After picking a fly hero, he's Did played Undying five times so far in Frankfurt. Do they have enough catch to go back to their Jakiro? A tanky early It's fighting. usually played by... It's an Earth Shaker. Okay. It's not too bad either. That's not from what we've up. seen and how he can perform with it. Indeed, the Moon Shaker is back. Final pick from Secret. This is a tough one. I can't really think of that many heroes that do well one-on-one -on -one versus Shadow Fiend. I guess potentially Viper, but is Viper even good versus that lineup?
There's still uh, Piper, Queen of Pain. Might be decent against the lineup just because you, you never strike the Sven and he does mm -hmm. nothing for the duration of it. And although it's probably impossible, Toby's currently sitting in the commentator's box praying for a drought. <laughs> That's definitely not happening. He's going to play a little harder right now. It's a leader instead. That's a great pickup. Okay. Here we go then. Game number three with OG on the verge of the championship. Toby, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Red. I don't know what you were praying for. I was definitely not playing for a draw. I was hoping the Team Secret will find more aggression. That's exactly what they've managed to do here in the draft because they're going to need it if they're going to stop OG from completely wiping over first EG today and now staring in the barrel of winning against Team Secret. Cinderin, is this draft the path to a fourth game? I don't think the draft has been the problem in any of the two previous games. I think they've just been outplayed. Uh, it's a very different approach, obviously, so if they do find a way of incorporating these picks and maybe throwing off OG a little bit with the bans, um, it could work. I think, judging from the time they took and how they looked in the booth, I think OG were a little less confident this time around with their draft with other, than with others, but they've got three lives. That they do. They've, they can do anything they want to. They can be a little bit more experimental. It takes the... It doesn't really go our way, so be it. But if it does, then we're with the champions. We win 3-0 over Team Secret. We do what no team, well, no one would believe OG would be capable of doing. But let's get into it and see how it goes as we will start game three of this best of five. Team Secret versus OG. The original game. Now they get a hero they haven't had for quite a few games, apart from they had one game against EG where they had the Shadowfiend and lost. Uh, but it has become a very big ban against OG. They will, of course, be getting that miracle Shadowfiend. And that's the number one thing for me to look out for in this game is can Secret counter it out? They mentioned it on the panel. Not a hero you want to give free reign to. At the same time, if they counter it out too hard and use so many resources, then all of a sudden, on Meander Shaker. And we've seen what that can do. Are you seeing how far Secret are coming in? If, even if they don't, like, attack and stop the SF from taking the sacks, they're hoping they can get enough little hidden boards they can stop it. So Puppy blocks the first and the biggest of the pulls on the Radiant Creep side. And they put one Observer Ward down to also block the pull area. And this is Secret with a Weeha Lena to go to that mid lane. And they run a dual off lane with Eternal Envy as well as Puppy. A very difficult lane to kill off. And when you think about it with a sustain from Secret, there's a hell of a lot of that. Like you've got a secondary life from the Wraith King. You've got Shallow Graves as well coming out from the Dazzler. You've got his heal available, and then you can also turn on the Vampiric Aura too. So there's a lot to work for for Team Secret if these fights do drag out. At the same time, there's a lot of control. There's a lot of uh, good damage coming out from OG as well. At this time, I think Crit needs to play a big Tusk game. I don't think he's had a bad game on Hero yet, so that's a good start. Um, but they're without their two classic defensive heroes in the Dazzle and the Wyvern that very clearly were targeted out by Puppy here. And that might be why OG didn't seem so confident after all. Like they, they were forced into something like a Sven that we haven't really seen them play much. Hi, Lai Dai. Don't think you want to walk up this hill. Moon's there waiting with a Fissure. Pardai will now walk back down again. There's only the Brain Tap damage and Weeha. But the Lion Strike Array could try and turn this. In fact, Puppy already TPing off the bottom lane. OG getting as aggressive as they can on this Earthshaker, and Pardai is coming back again. He's coming for round two. There's no abilities available for either of them. There's not enough mana on the Earthshaker. Let's he... just play Trilane mid. I mean... <laughs> please no. Why not? Just please no. Well, it looks like right now it kind of is a Trilane mid. Both Puppy and Pilot Eye standing behind Weeha. Bane is with... Miracle, but now the rotation from Moon Meander will be coming out. And Secret don't actually have a ward around that riverside. Misery. Yeah, there's just Stormbolt. Fissure is available. It's going to kick in. Remember, the TP is already used by the Dazzle, but they cannot body block Misery. He'll sprint himself away to safety and now burn that south. There's Moon, this roaming Earthshaker of his. We'll say, how long does it come down? Like, how long until he brings it down to the bottom lane? But we're not even really gonna see that are we like, there's more prioritization for crits farm yeah I don't, I don't think you're going bottom with the shaker here you should be focusing a lot more on that mid matchup and make sure get a good start in your shadow fiend for miracle 
And speaking of the bottom lane, AA is almost level 2. And when he gets level 2, he'll skill cold feet so they can Here try they to have a bracket crit. Fissure, and actually locks in with a puppy. Oh. Actually, no, there's a small gap. She slipped through. That lock was actually able to go off. It probably wouldn't have been a kill. Puppy ended up leveling up the Shadow Wave instead. Oh, I think they would have had Weeha there. <laughs> Level two raises. He needed to land two, probably in a couple of right clicks from the other heroes. But we the will never know. We won't. Bottom lane. Here we go. Cold feet onto crit. Uh, Still moving back. Yes, boots. It's gonna zone him out. This lane is really strong, by the way. The dual lane of secret. Uh, Wraith King's Wraith Fire Blast is a two second stun and then two seconds slow, so it always latches with Cold Feet if you cast them at the same time, unless it's against the hero with a blink. The only way Crit can avoid it is by using Snowball, but then he has to roll into the enemy, and that kind of puts him in an even worse position most of the time. So he has to be very cautious down here. You can see Secret are looking for that exact play, but Crit with the boots stays back. Oh, there oh. we go. They got him. There's your stun. Cold Feet as well. Snowball now being used. Oh, he died into too early. And now the Cold Feet is going to kick in. He could have actually waited a little bit longer. Is the damage enough with a secondary blast from Envy? There it is. Team Secret will claim the first blood on this off lane, capitalizing on the mistake of crit. Snowball does not purge the Cold Feet. It still runs while he's in the ball, so he has to wait a little bit longer so that he's during the invulnerability phase. While it's running, of course, it's a it's a delicate timing because if he stays inside the snowball for two seconds, he rolls even further down the lane. Oh, top that lane. was definitely avoidable for Crit. Stormbolt, Moon. He does actually have a son of his own, Misery. Going to use the crush. He's got support around the corner, so Puppy's ready to defend Misery. And now the fissure will go. Misery with a sprint available. He's got that crush back off cooldown, but being stormbolted up, that sprint he's allowed to take extra damage. But the crush, he's going to get back in range of the tower. Puppy still hovering behind him, so OG can't find the pick. But Misery's going to walk all the way back to base, give that top lane to Puppy. And he's perfectly alright with this. Shadow Wave's really good up against any of the melee heroes. Someone else is also perfectly alright, and that's Miracle on the Shadow Fiend in mid. He's up to 20 CS. Oh, good shards! This may be perfect with Weeha being locked in. Moon's rotating over, he's still got the Mango, now gonna trigger it. They go for the first stun, Snowball's a fireball, missing the Light Strike Array, and actually picks up the SF with him. Weeha with one raise and attack, SF will get the kill. That's a big one for Miracle. Now we can check out what's happening inside the Dire Jungle. There's no stacks there, so he will be fine. And this is a good idea from OG, that they put Fly in the safe lane and then rotate the Tusk, even though he's only level 3. There's just so much more gank potential coming out of crit. Landing those shards on Weeha is a very big kill, and Miracle in a good position already now. Getting that kill. Getting level 5.5, while Lina's only level 4.5, so a full level advantage as well. Of course, he doesn't have any stacks because of the inability for the supports to actually just be there and stack them for him. But because the supports are sitting inside the lanes, and well, one, they're getting their own levels, and two, they're ensuring the CS is kicking in for OG. The Sven already with 23, now they're going to look for a kill on bottom. Envy nightmare up, the Sven for the first storm bomb. They go for the cold feet again, crit waiting in a long time, and now he comes in for the snowball. Envy goes for one more stun, he doesn't have a life to escape from this. No reincarnation either. My daddy would have wanted to trigger it for that. A secret need to have a TP on Dazzle for this. Uh, it takes a very long time for OG to get a kill like that. There's four seconds of nightmare for him to TP down there. Then the heroes start running in, casting their stuns. I think Envy survived for a good 20, 25 seconds there in total. And a TP would have been a save. Puppy might have used it to come to the top lane earlier, so he would have had it on cooldown. But gold is definitely not the issue right now. Sitting on 700. You can buy boots, TP, and wards. I need to make sure Envy doesn't have a... A bad game here. They need that single target damage to kill off the Shadow Fiend later on. And that's why MV rotates. Get him into the jungle, get him farming. Misery's almost level 6, so his time for rotation will be coming soon too. They also need to get Pylai die with a couple of levels. Rotation is one thing, but they need to get the Ice Blast up and running. So when Weeha is ready to attack with Laguna Blade, they can ensure a quick kill, and that's what they're looking for now. Fly holding back behind the tower, Envy. Well, they could go for the stun on the Bane, there's not a lot of mana. It's also a very bad position for them to engage in. All the way over there, it's very easy for Miracle to get in and hit a couple of raises on them when they engage. They don't know if Tusk would have been able to TP in and help them out, which he definitely was. So Actually, good call, that would have been very bad for Seeker. So OG pulls so many people up to this mid lane in their own jungle. Pylai Dai is now free to do whatever he wants in the bottom lane. 
Weehan maybe not so lucky. The Shard's actually pushing him out. Oh, that's not a good snowball. Oh, yeah, that's way too deep. The Light Strike Array is going to connect on Drip. This is free gold. Laguna Blade will find the kill. The Nightmare from Fly trying to buy space, but it will not stop Weeha from popping the Tuscar. They brought all, four heroes to this mid lane. That was a really good try from Fly, though. He tried to Nightmare the Laguna Blade, but Weeha held onto it. Perhaps anticipating that exact play and just waited for the nightmares to kick in. He might then... have waited a little too long. No time moving through the tree line. He can find this storm bolt over on Weeha, but do they have enough with SF has a haste rune? Yeah, he oh, that's does. A good stun. Look for the sun, the Shallow Grave keeping Weeha alive, and they're in pretty deep with a war cry and that haste rune. Miracle will run away. So will this Ven and the Bane. Very nice heads up play there from Weeha under pressure. And like you said, this gives a lot of space to Pilate die, so secret are. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, he's fine. They're it's not the only the staying alive in mid, but they're getting le the levels on this AA. This time, Secret supports are doing better than in previous games. They're actually ahead of those of OG. Now, something I didn't get to talk about last game, the opening two supports that OG picked, we focused so much on their defensive potential between the Shallow Grave, the heal, and of course the Cole Embrace. Nice rune deny here from Puppy. I think that's going to be the end of that. It will be. But the other thing about the supports that OG have run is that they, they're good at farming. Shadow Wave, Kick Clear Creep Waves, they had Splinter Blast, so their supports were getting more levels and more gold than the opposition. This time around is different. The Dazzle is now sitting on Secret's lineup, and with AA getting all this space in the bottom, they're the ones who will get the first level sixes on the support. Misery, very smart TP out. There was this Ven walking around with the Invis rune. Now, he didn't get the perfect vision of him, but realized that... It was too low on that slider and had to back himself all the way back to Fountain. Keeping my eyes on this middle lane again, because Weehar is ready to fight. So, of course, is the Tuscar as well as the SF, but we are with Laguna Blade. OG have to give that respect. It's too easy just to get a quick pop. And Pylai die again by himself on bottom lane. Nothing stopping him from farming up. He's got his Tranquil Boots, yay. But it's the level 6 he now gets from the next creep that dies in the lane. When you start bringing Ice Blast to the fights, especially when it can be this far away from where the engagement is going to be, that's going to be a very big radius. And OG is dangerous fighting underneath a place where you have no regeneration. And they have a hard time killing Envy. I really like this Wraith King, uh, King pick because, first of all, he can survive the Requiem and then play through it, which has been the story of OG a lot of the time when the pick Shadow Queen. Miracle just kills the enemy carry and the fight is almost over, but Envy can survive it. They have very little mana burn, as the panel pointed out. Only the Fiend Script Mana Drain, which isn't that significant. None of the heroes will be likely to get a Necro Book. And therefore, he can just farm safely here. A lot of other carries would have to be scared of this position. But now, enemies even on the offensive. Well, there's your Hellfire Blast. Going to work on no tell, but it's just keeping him away for now. I was watching to see if that ultimate will come from Pylai Die. But He's still doesn't. free farming. Uh, Puppy, hello, Fly. Uh, Misery and Puppy just walking under the cover of smoke. They catch out the Bane. Next to the side shop. And the slaughter ensures the kill. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. So easy move down for Secret just to force into the mid lane. SF comes back to defend it. And Light Strike Array, well off target there from Weeha. He's getting big, though. Weeha is getting some good farm. <laughs> Trade off sentries? Nope. Just right. barely got invisible before Miracle's attack hit it. That's the Observer Ward going down for OG. Their vision across the map is, in fact, completely limited. They've got one sentry and that's all. They have no other vision across the map. And this to me is a Slardar game in comparison to the previous two. I think Secret's decision to still go for Slardar is a very good one. There's not that defensive physical protection from Cold Embrace and all the armor from Dazzle this time. So. When they put Amplify on Shadowfiend later on into this game, when Misery will probably have a Blink Dagger within the next maybe five minutes, and Wraith King perhaps the same, they can force Miracle out of the fight or to use a BKB very easily. And of course, I was going to say he's getting good farm. He's still way ahead of the curve, which he should be given the situation. But what's the story for the rest of OG? Sven is keeping up somewhat with a big fall off toward the bottom compared to what we saw from them previously. Yeah, it, it feels a little different. It's hard to actually flag which one of OG is being the core. It's almost like they're waiting for a good opportunity to say, okay, now this guy will be a core. Moon spent most of his time sitting in the true line, waiting for a fissure to fly out. So it's not going to be like the Moon Earthshaker we saw earlier today, where you walk around with four stars, blink daggers, whatever you want. The world was his oyster back then. This time around, he won't have these high maneuverability items. We'll rely on the speed from the Zven, the snowball from the Tusker. All these things together, but even the bottom lane attacking into an ancient apparition. With Pilot Eye going for this urn build, 
which is kind of always a bit of a contradiction for an Ancient Apparition, because he spends so much time being away from the fight, but it gives him the strength to survive the OG attack, or at least long enough for Dazzle to reply. And the one thing to keep in mind about the Warcrys, of course, all that AoE armor is nice against Secret, but it's, it's different in nature from what we saw in the previous games with how you need to position in order to get it off, the fact that your core was already in the middle of the fight to cast it. Ice Blast is kind of harassed. Miracle actually steal the game. It took both of them. It took both of the centaurs from him. Completely random, too. They didn't have any vision in the area. Pilot right? oh. Dice going to welcome that extra burst of gold. Um, They're still abandoning the bottom lane. Experience-wise, Secret have over 2k. This is, this is when I ask the question, is OG distributing their resources evenly or efficiently was probably the better word. I think so. I think this is fine for Secret so far. The main, the main thing to keep an eye on in this game is Shadow Fiend, and that's it. Sven has lost quite a bit of momentum. He's now 600 gold behind Wraith King, which is not that much, but... OG just don't seem to be able to execute the same kind of aggression that we've seen in the previous games. It's more about the playstyle than the actual golden experience that we're seeing. It's like Secret's draft. It's just kind of left OG completely uncertain as to what they need to do in the game. I'm a little uncertain about what's coming out here from the Wraith King. Like, is this... Okay, it will actually be a Blade Mail. I thought for a bit that Envy would be looking at his own initiation. Obviously, you're going to get that from the slaughter once that Blink Dagger is done. For I think you're going to Blink after this. Would make sense. If you're going for a Blade Mail, you want to put yourself in harm's way. Exactly. Blink into the fight, stun up the Shadow Fiend, put your Blade Mail up, and he can't use his Requiem unless he has a BKB. It's a good item to have against the hero like the Shaker, too, who takes so much damage from it. And I think Envy would be making a mistake not to get a mobility item. You can't really rely on Slaughter to do all the work for you, and you can just waddle in there and start dealing damage. Well, the Observer oh. is being placed. Oh, Weeha is in a very awkward spot here. Oh, wow. With the Observer, what they see where Envy and Weeha are moving. With these pings coming out from Secret, they understand this was a warding oh, now mission. Now they found him. Envy? Uh, okay. There's fun to be had on top lane. Not he can't take. It's a restraining order between this Wraith King and Bane, I think. Can't get within 500 range of each other. And the farm continues. So Secret, Misery is almost up to his... Blink, and because of that, I think Envy will give him farm priority here in the lane. It looks like that is indeed the case. He's standing in the front lines, allowing me, uh, Misery to secret, uh, safely farm this. Wow, what's going on? Okay, how is Pilot Eye able to keep doing this? I don't know. <laughs> Every time I look down here, there's no one from OG. Bane is just only TP down, but he can't reach Pilot Eye. With a Tranquil Boots, okay, maybe he can. Pilot Eye, that nightmare range, he's just out of it. It's... He's just reading the lane perfectly, and with the Dire Observe Ward sitting on the side, the only way to run at the Ancient Apparition is direct. And they don't have a Blink Dagger for it. They can Warcry and chase him that way. The Snowball's one other way, but even then, you'll probably position yourself in the tree line to come from the Fog of War. Top lane, Moon, just coupling with a Son of No-Tell. It was the first Stormbolt. And now Misery. Blink Dagger is up. That Ice Blast, okay. Well... Without that connecting, Secret are not feeling too confident. So they back up. But they I think this is the first time OG have been slowed down this much. I think that's the main thing to look at here. Even in the game against Evil Geniuses where they tried the same, it didn't feel like the slowdown was as significant. And that's because of the Alchemist pick they had in that game, keeping them ahead on the net worth. This time it's a Shadow Fiend. And while he is great and is still ahead on the net worth, you're just not feeling like the rest of the team is going to be able to keep up. So Miracle will be the absolute centerpiece in OG's strategy as expected. But perhaps he has to do a little bit more on his own that they were hoping for it's when Roshan. they drafted this lineup. It's Roshan time. With the early points up in Vampiric Aura, they got so much survive of, like sustain from both the Shadow Wave, the Vampiric Aura, and then you put the Amplification over on Roshan. So 16 minutes in, they enter the pit. And OG, smoke. they're going to smoke and try and stop this. They understand what's going on. As Weeha comes in, the Weave already starts as well. So they've got defensive armor. If they get this Aegis Immortal and OG fights this, this is going to be a terrible place for him. The Fissure will catch on three, but the Shards don't separate the team. You have the regular Souls come now for Wraithing. Shallow Grape as well as having the Blade Mail up. The Snowball protections there. No Tail is still dead. And the Ancient Apparition pick ticks out the Shadow Fiend. Weeha trapped on the high ground with Crit, but then again, who's really trapped? Crit, that Fisher keeps him there, and now it's Secret taking out four. Eternal Envy, the Blade Mill, as she finds the kill.
So not only do they grab Roshan, they hold on to the Aegis of the Immortal, they grab four players from OG, and now they'll take a tier one tower as well. And you might have wondered what the key part of secret picking this AA was in the draft. There was no Wyvern, there was no Dazzle, not the classic defensive heals. It countered out the Shadowfin mech in that fight. When he can't mech and can't bottle, they just need to hit one or two spells on Miracle and all of that net worth just goes completely down the drain. Very important hit there from Pylai Dai on what did look like OG could have taken a pretty decent fight. They got good shards, good fissure, they got the Requiem off, but not enough. And now, okay, Snowball chasing after Puppy. He instantly shallow graves. Understands it's still Warrior's Punch, so he can't TP himself out of this one. And actually, just goes back up to get denied. Not gonna happen. Bottom lane, misery, and he shades down on top of fly. The fissure from Moon will buy a little bit of space. Echo Slam is also available. Envy wants to keep his distance and still has Requiem of Souls. Stuns on fly, so he can't go for the Phoenix Group. And Weeha with a big double stun. They're gonna cash two, and Envy's committing. They're chasing after No Tail. Weeha is fly striker rate off cooldown. They know No Tail will be moving into the corner. And the ice bath coming in. Sven will pop. Raging will find the kill. And Secret now. Big back to back fights. They still will be losing their T1 tower in mid. And not inflicting any real damage onto the bottom. In fact, Weeha is the one taking most of the damage. But they back out. They still keep their Aegis and their Reincarnation, so they're ready for the next fight. This is a good play from OG, trying to dodge that fight with a Shadow Fiend instead of pointing down, just getting whatever trade he can. He is not in fighting shape just yet. He needs that BKB to open up. The problem is, with the pace Secret are farming in this game, Weeha will probably have his Aghanim Scepter at the same time. And then they just need to land the Ice Blast and a Laguna Blade and two right clicks on the Wraith King. And Miracle will die through his BKB as well. I hate to tell you, but in a very short amount of gold, Ancient Apparition will actually have more net worth than this event, who is the second highest net worth on OG at the moment. And Pylai Dai has a hand of Midas, so we can probably even establish this. And again, safe lane farming. Safe lane is OG's lane in this, in this case for the Ancient Apparition. Yep. He is preparing for uh, what could be a long game here. Man, he's so rich. He really is. This Aghanim set is going to come even quicker, and when it arrives, you're probably going to have a level 3 Ice Blast. You talk about the counter of the mech, you can just counter almost all of OG if that can connect. God strength being used here by No-Till. He only has two points in Great Cleave, though, so... It takes him quite a while. He just needs to clear money. this up. Well, he has to do something like this. He could buy a blink. There we go. OG are looking for the aggression. But it's difficult for them to engage, even if there's no Aegis on the Dire side. Actually, wait a second, Weehawk went for the Soul Booster instead of the Aghanim Scepter. That's pretty surprising to me. Well, if you are if you feel you're far enough ahead, going yep. for the Bloodstone isn't a bad build. It's for a the good Weehawk. item, for sure. It's just, um... I thought that was the direct game plan here for Seeker, was just stay ahead of the loop on Shadowfiend step by step, so he has no real point of strength. It's either that or Secret are, are thinking more towards that mid-game timing. I know we've hit the 20-minute mark now, but Misery soon will have his survivability item, BKB of his own, maybe. And when you have that, that big AA Aghanims, that time is going to be pretty sweet around the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Envy is close to a Radiance as well. Did not go from ability item just yet. I still think it's on the menu at some point for him. But Radiance, much better farming, higher damage output, of course, with the, with the Mortal Strike, the damage you can actually do with such a raw damage item is exceptionally high. They will be claiming this tower. Is there any trade-off for OG in sight? Doesn't look like it. Ice Blast? Oh, they really don't want to. But the Aegis is going to time out in, in about 45 seconds. The Ice Blast will stop Miracle as well as no Tail from forcing the bottom lane. Yeah, that being level 2 already is actually a very big deal. The impact damage is so much higher. And in fact, Envy comes in, looks for the stun over on Sven, can't blink in time, no tell. And now they start removing his armor too, the stun will connect over on the Wraith King, and Misery, he can't get in range for the amplification, so now, the blink from no tell, into the trees and far, far away. Close call. But Secret do defend their tower, so it's a one tower for no tower trade. They've also managed to place a good aggressive Observer Ward in that top lane before they uh, took Envy, that tower. Yeah. he's looking for some help. Yeah, would misery be nice if he can catch sprint. Up, but he can. No, misery can do it. He yep. beat into the tier two tower. So, oh, good okay, sure. noon. Is he coming thanks to the vision from the creep wave and just fishes away? He's just on the edge with that fissure. But it connects. That's what matters. But the farm continue and secret with a com uh, pretty comfortable five thousand golden experience lead right now. Finally, seems like they found some sort of solution, at least in this one game, to the early aggression from OG who. 
In contrast to previous games, have we seen them have four kills in the 22 before? I don't think so. Not the, really. The Bane of Fly hasn't really been able to find any openings. Moon Meander, still no no Blink Dagger. We've seen in previous games he's had it around like minute 15. And all just slowed down so much. Crit is actually closer to the Blink than Moon is. He has it in 10 gold. And what a bad time to get it too. It's great that he gets it, but you just finished a four stop over on the slider. So Blink initiate, if it is the slider, he just forces himself out. If it's someone else, there's a lot of saving mechanisms arriving for Team Secret. Look at Envy. Envy. He might need one. He just finished the Radiance. So he's flying out the courier at the moment. They don't want to engage on him. They knew he was there. They're pinging him out. He's standing there farming the wave, and they're not going because they're like, OK, he's out on his own. There's five heroes missing. If we commit, it takes too long. OK, Secret are coming. Immediate counterplay. They're going to have to commit. And this is also Secret walking under, underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. So either OG flag the fact that Secret is smoking, or they just work out and go, OK, or they die. Yeah, or basically. they die. That's it. That's, that's the only two options. Crit's on the top lane. Oh, He's going to blink himself and TP out, so... Nice escape here from OG. Yep. They're going to lose no one. Even with the four stuff on Envy, he cannot reach no tell. Of course, they do see him because of that lane ward they have. Actually, now being pinged out by OG. Oh, that have been Envy. Could also be the ward. No kill found. No. And the farming will commence. So still... So we're staying at that 5,000 status quo. I'm looking toward Roshan as the next point of uh, contention, which, if it goes similar to the last fight, then uh, Secret will be claiming it very quickly. Of course, now they should have level 2 amplified. They do. And way higher damage on Envy, so it will be a faster Roshan kill. And Secret, in the Medallion meantime, while they wait for Roshan, they're looking to take out these outer towers. So the tier, one, the tier 2 tower will drop on top. OG will not fight this. They're not really in any position to do so. They get a smoke again in 20 seconds time, and they've still got another one sitting in the inventory of Fly. So they got a chance there, but Secret are forcing OG to come at them. They're coming towards this top lane. You get a Mask of Madness purchase now on No-Tail. So there'll be no buyback for him in this fight. And Secret, they really just want to keep attacking. Weehar's already got three fiery souls just beating into that tier three tower. And Envy just lets it happen. Sitting on the front lines too, what do they want to do? Initiate on him? He's basically got Nagus the Immortal himself through that level two reincarnation. They back up after forcing the rotation of OG, and they'll clean up the bottom lane now. And again, they don't lose the tower in trade. It was close in the bottom lane here, but Secret do they do get there in time. Forcing all those TPs should allow them to force out the bottom lane as well as the mid, and that sets up for a very nice access to the Roshan pit. Oh, uh, Miracle. Amplification. Well, it got a Miracle. Invis room won't help him. But at the same time, Miracle doesn't know, uh, Misery doesn't know what else is behind him. And he can't solo him anyway, even after he amps him up. He will lose a one-on-one -on -one exchange against that. You basically pilot eyes ulti to connect. That's not enough even. He just BKBs and kills you in five hits when you have sprint on. Use a couple of raises or a wreck from as well. So he, he can't really challenge him, which is fine for Secret. They they don't need to kill. They need to control the map and get Roche and play from there. And now it's going to spawn. No tail. This ward spawns another hero here. That Observer ward for the, for the Dyer is... Uh, for the Radiant side is working perfectly. You're seeing all of Secret moving. Look how close it is to being sentry, too. You actually need to move the camera in a specific angle to see that it's outside the range. It's extremely close to being inside the vision of that Radiant Sentry, but... And this is why Secret will probably be scratching their heads, wondering why do they keep backing up when we move in like this at exactly the right time as well. But why worry about it? Just force the lane. You've taken the Tier 2 tower on top. If your next objective is going to be Roshan... Oh, okay, he is already up. The amplification is going to work. And the rest of Secret will as well. And OG, they're back at the tier 2 tower. They're gonna smoke up, but really, how much time do they have when you get the crit and Roshan? In fact, Secret are getting out of here. They don't think they can finish before OG will arrive. There, there's a ping top from Puppy. He's like, okay, we're pushing we're, your top lane. Does he blind blink? Mm -hmm. No, they got the Observer Ward. They see Eternal Envy farming. Weeha, okay. They see the Observer Ward too. Does <laughs> they have detection? No, they do not. Envy, no care. Walk into the pit and use Envy as bait. The smoke, oh, they found one. They found Misery down the river. The snowball's gonna follow after him, but Fly controlled the river, so it's a one for one. And Pardai keeps the vision up. Then again, he's walking oh, the shards. Oh, that's some really good shards. They need some help. They need a lot of help. The Ice Blast will still connect over on Miracle. Puppy too far away to get the Shallow Grave up. And now even with the Fissure, they isolate Eternal Envy in the bottom lane. 
The TPs are coming in, and then with Weehar arriving, gonna Lacuna blade him down. It's not enough damage, dropped out of 99 life. The Radiant's Burn is doing the work, but not enough of it. You also have to keep in the SF out, but with the Snowball forward, now they wind up for the ultimate. Lena Weehar just pops instantly. And turn Envy wants to keep fighting, but only reincarnation they'll end up burning. So Moon ticking out in the tree line. Envy knows he should be able to claim it. The six touch is keeping Moon alive a little bit longer. Stormball keeping Misery out. The Shallow Grave now has to be committed by Puppy. Moon will die into the tree line. Too poppy from that shadow wave as Envy isolated by the shards. The perfect positioning from Brit. We don't expect much less from him, and he gets the distance. Man, how much a blink dagger would do on Eternal Envy right now. He's gotta be going for that as his next item. I think they would have cleaned up that fight if he had any way of chasing them. But OG are just playing so well around these ice shards, keeping, I think, Crit single handedly kept two or three heroes alive there. OG have to come back, but they don't have Requiem. They don't have the BKB on the SF, and Envy, it's like he's using Roshan again as bait. But with the shards flying in, he backs out, and they let it go. For now. In fact, actually, yeah, okay, yeah, secret, they're gonna smoke. And they draw the line to wrap around, so they'll come in through the mid lane. That's where go. Moon's currently sitting. No Echo Slam above for him, but when Sven moves forward like this, the Yulsep starts from Weehar. Misery with a crush, is keeping Sven out to fight the Ice Blast. Moon's gonna pop to that one, a quick two kills. Coming the way of Team Secret. This will make the big opening that we're searching for to take out Roshan. That is definitely free now. Manta style completed on the Shadow Fiend. Gives him the chance to break out or something like Alina stun or the Wraith King stun. It's still a very difficult play for him. But plenty of problems right now. With this Blink Dagger on NBN and Aegis on Weeha, I think. Secret will be looking to maybe siege top lanes. As the panel pointed out, this is kind of how it's working out. They just don't have tools for this Wraith King. He's not scared of anything. Envy will just go in the front lines consistently. In order to kill him, they have to commit so many key cooldowns. And while they do it, they lose half their health on a couple of heroes to just Radiance and Blade Mail. And they keep dodging him. Like every single time. Envy just... Like he's walking amongst OG as one of them, but... OG just don't want him there. When, it, when MV actually gets close enough now with the Blink Dagger to do the damage, OG will have no other choice but to attack into him. But if they commit their abilities for this, like you're going to burn Reincarnation and have nothing left. That's their problem. And there goes your Tier 2 tower. So it's Team Secret. Maybe not having to siege the top lane. They take out the bottom. Rotate to the top as the turn. Envy? Yeah, what do you want to do, OG? Misery can even farm up in the mid lane now. Increase his items. You're 300 gold away from the Aghanim Scepter on Weeha. The Ancient Apparition has the point booster, but still another 1500 gold for Ancient Apparition to complete up his Aghanim Scepter. But the sweet timing is there from Secret, and they've got such a huge advantage. 7.5k gold over 5k experience. All the major items are there, and OG. How do they get back into this game? They need no tail to get big and start getting some crits. I don't... They have so many stuns and so much control, but they can't commit it on Envy. They can't commit it on the hero with the Aegis, and they're playing into Shallow Grave. So Secret, with the defensive tools they have, it's so difficult for OG to engage fights. They need some sort of massive cleave crit to get ahead in the fight. But they don't even and have no he is very far behind on farm now. Of he's the he's going for the BKB. He, like, ha he has to do that. that. That's his first item, so he can do something. Yep. And then after that, we're looking at damage items. This is one of the problems that Sven has and why he hasn't been picked very much. He's very kiteable. He's so item dependent and takes a very long time to get, uh, get his items on. The big plus of him is the war cry, but as long as OG don't dish out the, the damage to bring anyone down while they have the positive armor, it doesn't really matter. Secret don't mind having a long fight. They get stronger when it progresses. It might not matter as well once his assault cuirass is completed over on the Wraith King. Then they're going to repair a lot of what Zven does. This tier 2 tower is kind of done for. Weeha has just beaten it down and OG are not going to fight into this. They are still not ready. Even if you look for Moon to initiate, it's a level 1 Echo Slam. The damage just isn't there from the Earthshaker. You'll, you'll jump on Team Secret, but even your Ancient Apparition has over 1k life. The Dazzle's walking around with a full Solar Crest. You're even having the trouble of SF inflicting damage into a hero, because there's no Monkey King bar. The Solar Crest can be used defensively. They finally do claim a tower now, though, OG. So they got the bottom tier 1. It took them very long to get it. 
the last hit goes on crit, who looks like building into Lotus Orb, being able to remove Amplify damage, reflect the Sven stun, or the Wraith King stun rather, it's kind of nice. Nice blast. It's trying to stop the push. OG is just trying to keep this split going. That's why Notel hasn't left the top lane in a while. Envy's just creep skipping out the wave. So Notel's getting no more reinforcements. Once it's the tier two tower, that push will stop. Notel being up there might have potentially saved the lane of Varex. They're gonna use, or lose rather, their ages in about a minute and a half. And with how much time it's gonna take this dire creep wave to reach the top lane, which is very clear that Secret are trying to sit up for with this wave cutting, it's gonna take about a minute. And then their moment of opportunity is almost gone, at least with the Aegis. They could still try, but it's way higher risk. They've got one minute. One minute is all that's left. Moon, with that farm he got in the bottom lane, getting a lot more cash into him, but more importantly, that level two Echo Slam is there. And Envy just had enough. He attacked into the tier three tower. The second he stopped the opportunity, the stun will come on to fly. As Envy gets one back for his troubles. The Stormbolt doing his work, the Fissure catching out too, and Envy still going to work on the tower. Weeha's damage is actually doing most of it. And in fact, Weeha now moving forward, trying to find that stun over a miracle. But the Ice Shards will lock both Misery and Weeha together as Team Secret. A siege inside the base of OG, attacking his familiar rack for backdoor regeneration. They were stopping it for a bit, but now the Dire Creep Wave arrives back in mid. They get the stun over on Crit. We have with a follow up for the Snowball. It's going to bring Crit a long way forward. And Envy still with his level 3 reincarnation. He wants to fight, hitting so hard the Crit and Pain just pops the Laguna Blade of Weeha. And he keeps in control of Miracle while Nurtel is back behind the line, searching for a kill on Puppy. Weeha is going to put an end to this madness by using him up. And Envy, the Shallow Grave, they just can't kill the Racing. Even if they do, welcome to another one. Oh, he did have mana? Wait, what? He loves it, actually had the reincarnation trigger because of this. This is a big turnaround now. Pumping as well as Misery. Topping a lot of damage from that Echo Slam of Moon and Secret. They have to get out of here. They lost their big damage dealer. They lost their sustain. They do have Laguna Blade up, or maybe they just stick around. Crit, the damage from Weeha. We have to remember him. He'll you'll set the up on the SF. Lights oh, and nice man by the Manta style. Moon still on the front lines, however. Nowhere to really hide, as that damage from Weeha will reach him. They're looking for another stun. Four stuff up, they get it on Miracle. The buyback comes from the Tuscar. He can't protect him. Weeha with Laguna Blade does the work, but now he's in trouble. Fiend Script controls him. Flutter picked up by the Tuscar on one side. The Snowball chasing out the Lena. You'll set for him one second time. Denial is possible. As well with the bloodstone and we have got the choice does he do it no the tusker will end the streak and get the money but uh mana problems be real man considering envy died there without reincarnation i think secret got away with that pretty okay that's a really big mistake that could have cost a, a comeback there for og as of course the ages did expire on lena um bloodstone suicide i do agree should have probably been expended there he might have forgotten about it in the heat of the moment Trying to deal as much damage as possible. You only end up getting the tier 3 tower. If Envy had reincarnation there, that's Elena Rax. 100% sure. Yep. There's no counterplay for Odoo. They used everything they had. They have no way to get out, too. We haven't even seen really the effect, the slow that comes with reincarnation. Would allow Team Secret to get uh, another big positional advantage. How about if you run out of mana, though? There's no Necro Book. They didn't grip him, right? They gripped the Lena later in the fight. So it was 100% just his... Uh, Wraith Fire Blast and his Blade yep. Mail Charges? That's yeah. it? Must have used too much. Maybe failed a Tread Switch or something like that. Possible. Got a little bit too eager throwing out all the stuns, which I Envy played a great fight until that point. Yeah. And this Him fight, being aggressive is what he needs to do. Maybe that's when the duration of the fight isn't so great for Eternal Envy. One stun after the other. Does anyone... Did anyone... No, no one bought Arcane Boots. Maybe Puppy will consider that. It is, of course, a risk you run when you don't have a wand or a soul ring in your inventory. But at the end of the day, you just need to keep an eye on it yourself. It's a mistake he won't make again this game. Yeah. But it does give a little bit of a window for OG. They're still over 10,000 gold behind, but they get a little bit of the experience back. Still a deficit of 5k. But the SF's getting bigger and bigger as uh, Miracle working his way towards that butterfly. With Eternal Envy going in for what we assume is an Assault Curus at this point, it might make it a little bit more difficult for them to attack into the Shadow Fiend. And maybe that's where you look towards Weeha. They don't need to hit him. That's the luxury that Secret have in this lineup against a lot of the times we've just seen Miracle be almost impossible to deal with. The luxury they have is that if Ice Blast hits and level 3 Laguna Blade hits, that's enough to take half his health. And just a little bit of extra damage here and there and he's, he's gone. And even if he doesn't die, he has to BKB and run away. 
What's he gonna do afterwards? It's difficult for him to re-engage. There's no heals to bring him back up after the Ice Blast is over. It is tricky here for OG and... And trying to make Roshan wanna... the next point, maybe yep. a little bit earlier. They they smoke up. This is very good mid. timing. Ice Blast is out the window. Yeah, 30 Roshan seconds down. Soon. This is the best chance they're going to have for the rest of the game, probably, to uh, to come back fully. The problem is it's the worst target. <laughs> it's it's the Wraith King. And OG understand that Secret will always be using Envy as bait. And now Secret themselves smoke up, and they walk away from OG. The Courier is flying down. This might reveal a position. That Observer Ward will give... A slight advantage to Secret if they stuck around, but instead they move all the way into the Radiant Jungle. As the Courier comes back, they throw down their own Sentry Ward now, OG. And they understand that Observer Ward's there. They've also got to understand they're being watched. This is Actually, not see it. good for OG. It's because it's nighttime, they don't see it. Envy's gonna jump in. Secret have done the wraparound. They bring down Sven Krypton's fourth, but Moon, he can't get his Echo Slam off. With at least he's going to be isolated on the side. Miracle winding up for the ulti. Eternal Envy, the other one really being hit hard by it. And there's your Echo Slam, but so ineffective against Team Secret. Miracle isolated in the mid lane. Now, Manda Stiles tries to dodge the cold feet, able to do so. But you've still got too much follow-up here from Secret. They haven't lost a single Iota. And with that roll forward, Crip at least going to try and blink himself up the misery. Equal to the task. And that is a team wipe. Not only is it a team wipe, Roshan has just respawned it. So it's a full wipe and the Aegis and the cheese coming the way of Team Secret. And now we're reaching that point where Secret need to really baffle the scientists to lose this game. It's basically as simple as go top, send Envy in front, have him hit the barracks, force OG to initiate into you. You have Graves to save him, you have Cheese, Aegis on the Lina. You just need to draw cooldowns from OG, hit a couple of key spells, and they should be taking the racks and actually two lanes and the game. Envy's already here. Already blows this stun. Watch his mana. 280 at the moment. They nightmare. He only needs 160 to get that ulti off, and we are now going to arrive. The Fiend Script over the Red King with the Life Wrecker Ray. Instantly oh. canceled. They like Kuna play down this man with the crotch as well. Up OG feel like they can defend this. In fact, they don't. GG! Team Secret will force us into a fourth game and avoid the whitewash of OG here at the Frankfurt Major Final. And now I am extremely curious about the next draft because what was it? Secret in this game chose Dire. So, and OG chose first pick, correct? Correct. Yeah, they went for... Uh, so, no. so OG chose second pick. OG chose second pick, yes. yes. How are they going to adjust